God wants to heal you with transforming grace. Open up your heart and you won't be the same. Welcome to Transforming Grace. I am so glad that you tuned in again this week. Praise God. You know, I thank God for the viewers that are watching and the testimonies that are coming in. I'm getting great testimonies coming in. And that lets me know that someone is being changed. Someone is being transformed. You know, in the past episodes that I have taught, I taught on um, the righteousness of God, what it means to live by grace, and also combining grace and faith. And if you miss those episodes, you can go to transforminggrace.net, our website, and you can catch up on the past uh, programs. So, you know, um, God blessed me to write a book, and the name of the book is The Struggle Is Over, No More Religion. And in this book, it will help you to know how to live your life by grace. You know, you, you're trying to work too hard to live for God. You're trying to use your performance. You're doing this. You're doing so many different things. And this is what I've talked about on the other episodes also. And I'll be saying this over and over again on our programs because there's so many people that are trying to live for Christ in the wrong way. There are so many people that are being kept from Christ because they feel that they're just not good enough. And if you're feeling that way today, I'm here to tell you that that's not the truth. You should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You need to just really believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, that he rose again and he did this for you, and that grace is a person. His name is Jesus Christ. You know, the more you get into God's word, the more you can be transformed by grace. The more you believe, the more you can receive. You know, God um, is not a God that is sitting on high waiting to just punish you every time you do something wrong. No, he's not pleased with the wrong that you're doing, but you do have an advocate with the Father and you can repent. If you're continuing to have a problem living in sin, then it's maybe because you have not accepted the, um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You've not been baptized by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is a keeper. He will keep you from sinning. Glory to God. He will keep you from sinning. I'm going to say that again because we've been taught some, in some places that you do not need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8, he said, you shall receive power. Paul said it. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. And this was in the book of Acts. And this was Jesus. He was just really letting us know that if you do not have this power, then you're not going to be able to keep from sinning. And so that's what we're talking about today on our program. We're talking about being dead to sin and alive to Christ. And this subject today is coming from Romans, the sixth chapter, first through the 15th verse. Amen. Glory to God. Dead to sin and alive to Christ. And you may say, well, you know, I'm already living a good life, but if you do not have Christ in your life, you're just existing. You are just existing. You have to have Jesus Christ to really have a life and to have life more abundantly. Praise God. So in Romans chapter 6, it explains that believers are free from sin's control in the church of Paul's day. This is what Paul was explaining in Romans chapter 6, that these believers, they were free from sin's control and immersion was the usual form of baptism. 
So new Christians were completely buried in water, and they understood this form of baptism to symbolize the death and the burial of the old way of life. And so coming up out of the water symbolized resurrection to new life with Christ. And if we think of our old sinful life as dead and buried, we have a powerful motive to resist sin. You know, the word of God says, resist the devil and he will flee. So then we can continue to enjoy our wonderful new life as with Jesus Christ. Some of us are so sin conscious that we really can't enjoy our new life with Jesus Christ because we're continuing to think and sometimes people remind you of what you did in the past, what you used to do, how you used to live. But Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind me. And I, I press toward the mark of the high calling, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you realize that you are dead to sin and alive to Christ, then you can continue to enjoy your wonderful new life with Jesus. Okay, let's go to the Word of God so you can see what I'm saying. Romans 6, beginning with verse 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means, and this is Paul, and, and there's an exclamation in my point in my Bible, which means he said, by no means, what's wrong with you? Why do you think we should continue in sin? But some of us think that today. Glory to God. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Verse 3 says, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So this is how you're going to live this new life when you think about what Jesus has already done. He's already done. He, matter of fact, he has done everything that he's going to do for you to have this new life. That's why he said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He's done everything that he's going to do for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 5. It says, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. And I read, uh, that was Romans 6, verse 5 through 7. Anyone who has died to sin has been set free from sin. You know, we continuously talk about how Jesus Christ died on the cross, but when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he took your sins with him. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you're saying, I'm a new creation now. I'm new. You know, I can have a new life because, not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did. Amen. We can enjoy our new life in Christ because we are united with him in his death and his resurrection. In other words, he got up. Now you can get up. I said, he got up. Now you can get up out of sin. You do not have to sin. Get up out of those ways, those old ways that are not of God. Leave them at the cross. Leave them at the cross and start living your new life because you are dead to sin. If you are a believer, you are dead to sin and you can be alive to Christ. So we can enjoy our new life. The power and the penalty of sin died with Jesus on the cross. God does not make us robots, saying. He didn't make us robots. We will, we will still feel like sinning, and sometimes we will sin. But the difference is, before we were saved, we were slaves to sin. 
But once we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we became slaves to Jesus Christ. We became slaves to righteousness. We were able to choose Jesus Christ. We had a choice once we were, when we were in our sin, I, we, God gave us a choice to choose. We had to choose Jesus Christ, amen, so that we can be dead to sin and alive to Christ. And we can live abundant lives, lives for him, amen, praise God. So if you're watching today, I'm teaching on being dead to sin and alive to Christ. And the messages that have gone forth and will continue to go forth, these messages, I believe that God has given me an assignment to help you not be a religious person, to help you know that God loves you no matter what. He loves you no matter where you are. God loves you. Matter of fact, he's in love with you. Amen. But are you in love with him? He loves us. He says you are the apple of his eye. But what do you think about Jesus Christ? The word says today, today you hear my voice, heart, not your heart. So if you're watching and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you can go ahead right now and just repeat after me and say, Jesus Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Come into my life. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Take my life and use it for your glory. Amen. Praise God. And if you pray that prayer, then that means that you have come into the family of God. You've come into his kingdom. Angels in heaven are rejoicing. Amen. That's called the prayer of salvation that you just pray. You actually pray and ask the Lord to save you. And I believe that if you prayed that prayer, praise God, you are a changed person. And if you did pray it, I want you to go into our website, transforminggrace.net, and let us know that you became born again today. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And also you can call the number on the screen because I would like to send you a copy of the book, The Struggle is Over, No More Religion, because this book is going to help you to live for Christ by grace and not by performance. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because let's go to verse eight, Romans six and verse eight. I'm just so excited because I know that people are watching and I, just by the testimonies I've been receiving and your lives are being changed. And you know, once when I was saved, I had been saved for nine years and had not, did not, had not heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it was, it was a struggle. And then once I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was still in a struggle because I thought that I had to perform. I thought that I could get to Jesus and a closer relationship by the works that I did. Now, you may be a gifted person and you want to, but your gifts are not drawing you closer to Jesus Christ. It's all about his grace. He loves you no matter where you are. Everyone is not as gifted as you are. But guess what? Jesus loves us all the same. So you need to receive that today. Amen. So verse eight, it says, now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. How are you living your life today? Are you living your life to God? Glory to God. It's never too late. It is never too late. But Satan does not want you to understand that you are dead to sin because he doesn't want you to be alive in Christ. He doesn't want you to understand that. Well, are you saying that I don't, I will never sin again? That's up to you. You know, that is up to you, how you live your life. Amen. I'm telling you this, 
that the only one that I know that has lived and walked this earth sin free is Jesus Christ. But I can also tell you that when you find yourself uh, having committed a sin, you can go before the Lord, you can repent, you ask him to forgive you and change. Repent means to change. And I'm talking to some of you out there who you have actually left the church because of your sin. I know for a fact that I have uh, seen believers fall in sin and God has forgiven them, but they have not forgiven themselves. And because they were embarrassed, they actually left the church because of embarrassment. The church really had, didn't know that they had sinned, but they knew they had sinned. And because they were so embarrassed, they allowed the devil to trick them and keep them out of church. And maybe you're listening, you're watching today, and that has happened to you. But God, once he forgives you, the word of God says that he throws it in the sea as far as the east is from the west, the sea of forgetfulness. God's not remembering what you did. So why are you still remembering what you did? Amen. Amen. Rebuke the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. Don't allow him to beat up on you. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Don't allow him to beat up on you. Just know how much Christ loves you because he loves you so much today. And I'm here to tell you that. When you experience his love, it changes your entire life when you know that no matter what. It gives you that blessed assurance. And many of us, uh, you know, we're concerned about what kind of insurance we have. Do I have enough insurance? Do I have insurance? Do I have enough when I die uh, for my family to bury me? You know, do I have enough insurance? Do I have the right kind of insurance? We're so concerned about insurance. But what about assurance? That blessed, blessed assurance. That's what we need to have. And that blessed assurance, it tells us, it lets us know, amen. It gives us the confidence that when we leave this place, we will be with the Lord. Absent from the body is pre present with the Lord. And that's assurance. See, when you have assurance knowing that this is not your home, you're just a pilgrim passing through. We're foreigners in this land. We're foreigners on earth. But when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know that, you know, I, I'm going to enjoy the journey. I, I want to have a good time with the Lord while I'm here. I want to be his servant while I'm here on earth. But I'm ready. When he comes for me, so you, have you seen lately, have you just looked around you and have you seen that we are getting closer and closer to Jesus coming back? He's on his way back, saints. And that's why the word says today you hear his voice. You don't have time to think about it. You just, just don't harden your heart. Open up your heart, heart and let Jesus come in. Open up your heart and let Jesus come in because he loves you and he wants to be with you. The word of God says that, you know, he, he's, he's standing at the door knocking and all you have to do is open the door. He's not going to force himself to come in, but he will come in when you open the door. Amen. Remember, you are dead to sin and alive to Christ when you believe in God's grace, when you allow grace to transform your life. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to verse 11. It says, In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive, in, alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought, glory to God, from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. You say every part? Yes. 
beloved, every part, every part, amen. I don't care what the world is doing, you know. The word of God says that we are to abstain from the sin of fornication. And so if you've been using that instrument, and you know the instruments I'm talking about for fornication, then you need to repent because fornication glory to God, is not for believers. Amen. It's not. If He said, if you love me, then you will obey my word. And Jesus said we are to abstain from fornication. We are to live holy lives. I have a book, and the title of that book is called Celebrating Celibacy. And, you know, it sounds kind of crazy. You say, celebrate celibacy? What's, what's to celebrate? There's a lot to celebrate because when you're obeying God, you feel good about obeying him. You are showing him that you love him by keeping his word. So I had to just, the Holy Spirit wanted me to say that. Yeah, all your instruments, amen, keep them holy. Wait until you get married. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I didn't write the book, so don't shoot the messenger. I'm just giving you what the word said. Okay, verse 14 says, For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but you're under grace. See, that's when you, when you know you're under grace, sin is not your master. You know, you're not trying to sin. This is not giving you a license to sin, this message today. You don't need a license to sin anyway. But when you know you're under grace, for one thing, I mean, just think about God so loved his only son that he gave him for us, Jesus Christ. I mean, that's enough to make you want to love him right there. But then look how Jesus, he gives us new mercy every morning and grace. And some of the things that you've done, you know, you can't even imagine how could God have forgiven me? But he forgave you when he was on the cross, when Jesus Christ was on the cross. He forgave you then. He forgave you. Amen. So you just have to receive it and believe it and start living your life for him and stop letting the enemy, the devil, tell you that, you know, bringing condemnation to you because of what you have done. Because you can change. You can be transformed by grace. Amen. Glory to God. So count yourselves dead to sin. And that means that when, what Paul meant when he said that, he meant that we should regard our old sinful nature, sinful nature as dead and unresponsive to sin. And we're no longer slaves to sin. We have a new beginning and the Holy Spirit will help us to become what Jesus has declared us to be. And so if we're no longer under the law, but under grace, we are now free to sin. I'm sorry, we're now free from sin and we can disregard the Ten Commandments. Is that what you're saying, Apostle? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not giving you a license to sin. I'm not saying you're free to sin and you don't have to, uh, you know, you can disregard the Ten Commandments. I'm not saying that. But Paul said, by no means. But when we were under the law, sin was our master. The law does not justify us or help us overcome sin. But now that we are bound to Jesus, he is our master. He is our master. And he gives us power to do good rather than evil. Glory to God. So I'm just excited about that today. I'm excited that I no longer have to be under the law. I no longer have to do what the devil tells me to do because of grace, and because I love Jesus Christ so much, I want to obey his word. And I know you're watching and you want to do the same because you love Jesus so much, you want to obey his word, amen. So just remember that no matter what you have done, I'm gonna say it again, you can repent 
you have an advocate with the Father, and you can come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad about that? Wanted to let you know, too, that if you're looking for a church home, why don't you come to Worshippers Interceding for Excellence Church and join us? On Sunday, we start at 11 o'clock a.m., and on Wednesdays, we start at 7 o'clock p.m. for our Bible study. And we do have a children's ministry, so just think about it. Just come on out and visit us, and you will never be the same. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Dead to sin and alive to Christ. This is not something that you hear a lot about because we actually do not think that we can be dead to sin. But I, if it's in the word of God and you know that it is because I read it to you today, I believe it because I believe what the word of God says. Amen. Glory to God. So praise God. If we're no longer under the law, but under grace, we are now free to not sin. Amen. We are under grace, so you do not have to sin. And if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, I have seven principles that you need to remember today. Number one, sin's power is broken over you. Number two, your sin-loving nature is buried. Number three, you are no longer under sin's control. Number four, look upon your old self as dead. Number five, give yourself completely to God. Number six, you are free indeed. Number seven, you can choose your own master. So if you're not a believer, that's if you're a believer now, these points are for you. But if you're not a believer, then who do you choose to be your master? Who is your master? The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So open up your heart and allow Jesus to come in. I'm going to ask you to pray with me again because you may just be tuning in. And just say, Jesus, come into my life. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I repent. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Take my life and use it for your glory. God bless you. And remember, every day you are being transformed by grace. God wants